Welcome to East Atlanta 1017 News. My name is LaFleur Fells. It's a cold one today as the winter frost is coming upon us. Today marks the 150th anniversary of the Great Triumvirate. But what exactly is the Great Triumvirate? We sat down to drop top Chris up in the field to educate us. Chris up. Thank you LaFleur Fells. Now we're here in Washington DC, an appropriate place to talk about the Great Triumvirate. The Great Triumvirate was, a, was created at the beginning of the War of 1812 by Henry Clay, Daniel Webster, and John C. Calhoun. They all achieved in fame. They personified the regions that fought over expansion, finance, foreign policy, and slavery. Webster, who originally represented New Hampshire and then Massachusetts in the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate, reflected a New England Yankees promotion of merchant trade rejection of slavery. Calhoun personified the South's gradual transformation from loyal nationalism after the War of 1812 to the belligerent sectionalism that caused all the trouble during the 1850s. Henry Clay was from Kentucky, which at the time was made, time made him a Westerner, and he mirrored as section's ro role in the unfolding national dispute. The West seen as potential counterweight by North and South as the two sections sought to prevail political, politically in Congress. Because these three swung often, irresistible political influence during the sectional crises that led to the Civil War, their careers are linked to the disaster despite them having died roughly a decade before succession brought on the conflict. By then, they were called the Great Triumphant, a label that attests to their towering significance, but misleads by suggesting that they, they more than occasionally cooperated for the good of their country. Rarely, rarely we were the allies, and on those few occasions when they were, it was a shifting partnership between change. Now back to you, LaFleur Phelps. Thank you, Chris. Up. Now we're going to the dated interviews of these specific legends. First on our list is Henry. Hello, I'm Henry Clay. Um, I was from K Kentucky and I represented the West. Uh, I was a slaveholder, surprisingly. Um, I was working the U.S. House of Representatives and I was a Democratic Republican and a war hawk. Um, I was also the Speaker of the House. Um, I worked with the American Colonial Society and created some of the main concepts of the American system and the Missouri Compromise. Um, I was a big factor in the election of 1824 as I got elected, as some of my other members did in the Great Triumphant. Um, I was the U.S. Secretary of State and the U.S. Senate. Um, and then the nullification crisis slash the Compromise Tariff of 1833, I worked with my good buddy, John Calhoun. Um, I also deal with the Bank War, the election of 1844, and a handful of other things. My, la my impact on America is everlasting, as you can see. Thank you. Now back to LaFleur Phelps. Great interview. As seen in this interview, Clay is arguably the greatest pacifier in United States history. He believed in peaceful resolutions and spoken slash controlled affairs. Now we're going to send it to John Calhoun, who also has an interview for us. Oh, hello. I am John Calhoun, and I am a U.S. House of Representative from the South Carolina representing the South. I was also a spokesman for the slave plantation system of the antebellum South from 1782 to 1850. I was the center of the nullification crisis, which it nullified tariffs and labeled them unconstitutional. Uh, nullification is a legal theory that a state has the right to nullify or invalidate any federal law it deems unconstitutional. But in my words, it is the right of a state to interpose in the last resort in order to arrest an unconstitutional act of the general government within its limits. I was also a U.S. Senator at the time and joined Henry Clay in working with the Compromise Tariff. Thank you. Now we send it to the weather with my twin brother, LaFleur Frank, as he's going to tell us about what's going on outside in the colonial world. Frank? It's hailing! It's raining! I can't feel my toes! Thanks, LaFleur Frank. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Calhoun. Without you, the tariffs of our great, great nation could be extremely high and unable to maintain peace. Our final view of these legends, but certainly not least, is Daniel Webster. Mr. Webster, take it away. I, Daniel Webster of New Hampshire, and later Massachusetts, represent the interests of New England and the North in general. I was the first 
elected to Congress in 1813 after becoming known in New England for my opposition of, to the War of 1812. Known as the greatest, one of the greatest speakers of my time, I was known as Black Dan for my dark hair and complexion as well as grim side of my personality. I tended to advocate for federal policies that would help the industrialization of the North. The Supreme Court under Chief Justice John Marshall adopted my arguments in a number of significant cases. Among them, Dartmouth College versus Woodward, McCulloch versus Maryland, and Gibson versus Ogden. These decisions strengthened the federal government as against the state governments, the judiciary as against the legislative, the executive branches and commercial and industrial as against agricultural interests. Thank you for having me, East Atlanta, 1017 News. Wow, great interviews. As you can see, the great turn for it can be defined as three statesmen who dominated American politics for much of the first half of the 19th century. Henry Clay, Daniel Webster, and John Calhoun truly were legends in themselves. Now we're going to send it to our sponsor for a commercial break. You ever want to be an American frontiersman, but with the right weaponry? Well, get the Remington. It's the best route to go, and you will not regret it. And even if you think it ends here, Oh, it gets better. We're throwing in a two-for-one deal where you get the silver edition and the brand new blue edition. The brand new blue edition comes with dual clipped handling and also double the mag. Powerful. Dynamic. Buy the Remington today at a low two-for-one price of $500. You won't regret it. I promise. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. This concludes our interviews and brings a wrap to our historical recap on the Great Triumvirate. The Great Triumvirate, or the immortal trio, ran American politics for a majority of the 19th century. Emerging from the woodwork was Henry Clay. He served as counsel for Aaron Burr in his treason trial and served two short stints in the United States Senate before being elected Speaker of the House of Representatives for 12th Congress. Calhoun coming second was introduced to politics by being great mates with Henry Clay. Collectively, these two declared the War of 1812. Webster's impact was truly not felt till post-war. Webster dealt with the chartering of the Second Bank of the United States and the Tariff of 1816. After the 14th Congress, Calhoun became Secretary of War and Webster declined recollection to focus on his law practice in Boston, a practice which took him before the United States Supreme Court in landmark cases. In these cases, here's that represented the Bank of the United States. And this will do it for us today at East Atlanta 1017 News. We learned so much about the Great Triumvirate today. And next week, we're going to be learning even more about Colonial America. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And enjoy your night.